Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, we've got Dark Wolf 782 playing the Tier 10 British Battlecruiser slash Battleship St. Vincent. Now this is a ship that I recently picked up. You've, if you've been watching my videos this week, you have seen uh, the Tier 6, Tier 7, Tier 8, and Tier 9 in this line played by me. But this is such a phenomenal example of what the St. Vincent can do, courtesy of Dark Wolf. Then I wanted to use this one to uh, finish up Battle Cruiser Week. So, what can I tell you about this ship? I will pull up the particulars and we will discuss the guns, which are 457s and hit really, really hard, have a great fire chance, great pen values, lots of really good things. So I'm going to go through all the particulars, the weapon systems, etc., and then I'll give you the pros and cons from the World of Warships wiki. Now, maybe you don't really care what World of Warships says, and if you, if, if you don't, well, sorry about that. But I think it is, in general, usually fairly accurate and can give idea an idea to newer players or players that don't have a lot of experience with a particular ship or ship line, at least a ballpark idea of how to best play a ship. So, to begin, the guns, again, they are 457s. They are in the kind of similar configuration to the last couple of tiers. You've got two forward, one amidships, and you've got three barrels in each of the turrets. So you've got nine total guns. Reload time base is 30 seconds. 180 degree turn time, 30 seconds. And the base firing range is 20.5 kilometers. Max dispersion at that 20.5 kilometers is only 220 meters. These guns are phenomenally accurate. They are basically their cruiser dispersion. And that makes them very, very dangerous to have to contend with. Now you can see a 7,000 HP shot on an Henri over the top of an island from long range. And if you know how to aim, this entire line is probably going to be a lot of fun for you. It was for me. Now, the HE shells, they do a maximum damage of 7,100 HP. And they have a 63% base chance of starting a fire, which is just terrific. The initial HE shell velocity is 757 meters per second. The AP shells, max damage 14,900. Initial AP shell velocity 762 meters per second. So just slightly faster, but not enough to even notice. A little bit of a change from the previous tier, but if you are familiar with the tier 9, you will not have any problem at all with the tier 10. Now we've got a more or less fully broadside shot on a Yamato who's turning out a bit here. I might have gone AP, but he had HE loaded, so that's what he fired. 6,800 damage. Now, right now, in my opinion, Dark Wolf is showing a lot of broadside to Yamato. But Yamato's guns are aimed somewhere else. And so our hero is able to escape with his life as he picks up a little bit more chip shot damage on the Yamato, who turned out. And he makes a shot on Shikishima. And is, I think, intending to make use of this island. Now we're getting a lot of HE spam here, presumably from Harugamo, and you can see it there popping up on the minimap. And that means the possibility of range 12 torpedoes. Now, one of the things about this line, if you've been watching these videos all week, you know that these are very fast ships and that they also have a speed boost. You saw the torpedoes leave the Z-52 that's just ahead of Dark Wolf's position here. And almost 9,000 damage there on the Harugamo from those HE shells. And a little bit more just to cap it off. And now making use of the speed, try to get away from some torpedoes, but these are <laughs> these are sub torpedoes, and it has a lock. Now I might have used the repair party ahead of them making contact to avoid some of the damage, but you know you can't argue with success, and Dark Wolf has a phenomenal game here. We are four and a half minutes in, and he's at 40, you know, 55,000 damage and counting. 
and he is aiming beyond where you saw the indicator, the ping indicator, which I have recently learned is what you need to do. Gets a little splash damage there and runs into the edge of the map. And sitting broadside to a Yamato, a very dangerous thing. Also broadside to Shikishima. But they are focused elsewhere. They're focused on the Zhao and Petro and Yamato that are north. And I think they do that at their peril because the St. Vincent in capable hands, which is especially someone who knows how to aim, is so dangerous. And Dark Wolf does know how to aim. So there's another 9,000 damage and a fire, which is continuing to burn, and now up over 70,000 damage and counting. And Yamato finishes off that Shikishima, and Borgonia finishes off Des Moines, and now the good guys have a 11 ship to 8 ship advantage. And the Z-52 has spotted the sub again. Dark Wolf says, you know what, I'm going to help you out a little bit here. And then we'll go right back to try and burn down the Yamato. Oh yeah, those are going to land. Big hits. And Z-52 will almost certainly be able to finish the job. And I want to say that uh, that is some, at least from my perspective, some excellent team play. I think we all know a lot of players would have waited for Z-52 to do some damage and try to time it so that you finished off the sub. Dark Wolf, to his credit, said, nope, I just want to help my team. I'm going to try and help the Z-52. If I can sink that sub before the Z-52 gets to it, there's no chance the sub rams him, takes him out of the game. And you can see the Yamato's got his guns pointed this way. There's another fire, another 7,000 damage. And the Yamato repaired. And I, why he didn't fire, I don't know. Or why she didn't fire, I guess the name is Monica there. Dark Wolf switches to AP on a broadside target. This can be so devastating. This, this ship with these guns can really do some big damage with the AP. But he doesn't get the chance because the Shimakaza takes out the Yamato before he gets there. Smolensk is putting shots on the Shimakaza. Shimakaza torps her away. Dark Wolf puts out some shells on the Smolensk. And this game is looking very good for the green team. Now that's a 16 kilometer hit on a Smolensk. HE shells would probably be much, much more effective here because these guns are so big that the chance of getting an overpan is really high. But two pens. Smolensk was apparently angled just enough to allow the shell to travel from where it entered the ship all the way through to the back of the ship in order to arm. But I have to say that these shells and the entire line, their AP shells do arm really quickly. So while you may get a lot of overpens, you might also, like we were there, get shots like this. Uh, Smolensk may have been counting on overpens, and with the, the with this particular line, what I call the battle battle cruiser line and the, the British battleship line, you don't always get overpens. Uh, you, you can get some surprising pens like we did there, and that can be a real problem for light cruisers. Now the red team is in our green team's cap, and our hero is chasing down the Ohio and going to have to contend with the Mecklenburg. You can see he's taking a lot of damage. Zhao is he's kind of forced to take on um, Shimakaza and Khabarovsk and you know, by himself. You can see Trump is heading that way. Dark Wolf has switched back to AG, which I think was a great call. And 
He's just going to work on trying to burn down the Ohio. It's his damage totals just continue to climb. 135,000. And climbing with 10 minutes left in the game. Now, is this game going to go 10 minutes? Probably not. But it's a lot of damage, and there's still a lot of time left in the game. And Dark Wolf picks up the Confederate. And it looks like Ohio's going to be able to avoid that torpedo. Shot comes in from the Mecklenburg. There's another fire and 5,400 damage, and it just keeps racking up. Now, this game is really going to be hinging upon whether or not the Zhao and Trump are effective or not. I have a feeling they probably will be, right? Um, so I think we can kind of ignore that for now and just enjoy seeing these really accurate guns continue to put a hurt on the Ohio. That's kill number three. And now squaring up with the Mecklenburg. You can see the Mecklenburg secondaries firing off. <clears throat> and it's debatable whether the Mecklenburg is going to turn in here or not. If he does, he knows he's dead. So he instead decides to turn away, which takes him out of secondary range. Nice AP shot. And if he turns back this way, the AP can be even more effective. And it looks like it looks like he might. No, nope, he's gonna turn out. So we may see Dark Wolf switch back to HE after this volley. Yep, that's exactly what he did. So fully angled Mecklenburg, still over ten thousand damage. Dark Wolf doing a great job staying out of secondary range. Shimikaze takes out the Zhao. So it's Tromp versus Shimikaze, and the Havarosk is, well, where is he? The red team could still win this, but I think we know what happens here. There's another fire. Takes out the torpedo tubes. And our hero has to be really careful here because he's broadside to the Kremlin. Obviously, he's very aware of that. He's turning south. He doesn't want to eat big shots from the Kremlin. And I think Bilal was right. I think, I think the green team has this one in the bag. Shimakaza gets sunk. No fire, but what was already burning was enough. And that is kill number four. Now it becomes a question of, will Dark Wolf be able to pick up the Kraken? Now, he switched to AP here. I probably would have done the same thing. Havarovsk is plainly in the green cap. Kremlin's working to try to reset. But... <laughs> With five green ships in the cap here, probably not going to be able to do the job. 9,900 damage. Yamato puts out a big shot. Now who's going to get the kill? We got just a little bit more until these guns are reloaded. And they cap out the team. Now, <laughs> that... Uh, that ending was a little anticlimactic, I realize, but that's what that's what we're looking at right there. So we had 7.9 seconds left. 7.6, seven seconds, and he, I believe, would have been able to finish off the Kremlin for his Kraken, but unfortunately for him, but you know, good for the team. Time expired. Now, this replay is a little bit old, so I don't have the after game screens to be able to show you. But let's take a look. Nine fires started, 14 incapacitations, 
96 shells on target for four kills, two floods, and that was from his airstrike depth charges, which uh, were very, very helpful in finishing off a sub that was out on the flank. A Citadel, some awards, a fantastic game, and I think this really does give you a solid idea of what this ship and this line are really kind of all about. Congratulations, Dark Wolf, and thanks for sending me this replay. It is very enjoyable to watch. Those of you joining me, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you haven't already, I hope you'll like and subscribe and maybe consider pointing your friends this way if you think they might enjoy it. And I'll see you next time.